I'd like to welcome everybody to the 34th Annual International Boutique. This year we have some amazing things, a lot of unique, one-of-a-kind items. And I'm going to take you on a tour and maybe share with you some of the projects that the boutique is going to benefit. The International Boutique is a fundraiser for Amartel. And all of the proceeds go to support projects for women and children in Vermont and around the world. And this year we're also going to be supporting the Power On Puerto Rico, which is a program that Amartel's doing in partnership with Amicus, bringing solar power stations, little charging stations, to the rural areas in Puerto Rico who are still struggling after two and a half months with the power outages from Hurricane Maria. So let's start in Kenya. We went to Kenya this spring, and we have an amazing project there. I don't know, maybe some of you are aware that the UN declared again a state of famine for the Horn of Africa. And northern Kenya is part of that. And we had a meeting of all of our local area people in, Amr in Amritel in Kenya this March, I believe, to think what can we do to try to address this issue. And although we're not, we don't have the capacity to go into places like Somalia and Ethiopia or to do large-scale agriculture, we can work very closely with communities, with the children that are struggling with the after-effects or ongoing situation of malnutrition. So we spent a lot of time discussing what we could do there. And you're going to see some of the things that we were able to buy while we were in Kenya, knowing that all the proceeds will go to support our project there. And we're raising money. We're, we're going to be building spirulina farms. We have two already. And the spirulina will be going to support the children that are suffering from malnutrition. It's considered by the UN the number one way to reverse the effects of malnutrition. So here's a pregnant zebra who, of course, I couldn't could not refuse since we're talking about women and children. We have a lot of animals. Uh, again, people know that Kenya is where you see so much of the wildlife there. Uh, some of the things, this guy I just fell in love with. This, I, some people don't exactly know what it is, but it's supposed to be a porcupine. And the people in the, the Maasai and a lot of the people in Kenya, are, they work so hard to create crafts. And again, what we find is what we see everywhere. But no matter what the living situations or the resources, people can make beauty and art everywhere they are, out of most anything. So these little guys are beaded. It's kind of, some people thought it looked like a rat that uh, had a bad hair day, but it really is a porcupine. We have some beautiful bags that are all handmade. And these are kakoi cloth. These are hand-woven beautiful cotton cloths for tablecloths, or you can wear them, or as a throw. And of course, we had to get some really cool maracas little giraffe guys. And in the back, you'll see a Kashmiri rug, which is not from Kenya. But as people who come to the boutique know, one of the things that we have that's just an exceptional buy are our rugs. We have carpets from all over the world, really high quality. And as just a reminder, everything at the boutique is wholesale. So if you need a rug or you're thinking that you might want to look at a rug for this year, this might be the time and the place. We bought over 50 new rugs for the boutique. I kind of lost my head because I love these guys. Anyway, back to Africa. We have some, these are really cute, little stocking stuffers. This is, these are made out of stone. They're carved. And these are toothpick holders. And after you've used the toothpicks, you can use them for anything else that suits your fancy. If you want a little place to keep your, your candle, we have the hippo candle lights. And for some reason, we have a lot of hippos this year, hippos and rhinos. And these hippos, I just, these are the sleeping hippos. Look how sweet that guy is. So moving on from Kenya, we'll move on over to the next place. When we were in India, we went to a little shop in the market that sells antique tribal art from Orissa, Rajasthan, other parts of the country. And I just, I love these things. So this is, it weighs, this is about a 10 pound horse. It's made out of solid brass, uh, maybe not solid, but pretty solid. And there are, we have a number of items this year, one-of-a-kind items that are really unique. Look at this guy. So going to the horse, this is the horse that did not do so well when it came to getting oats. And uh, but then we have, we have the elephant team. We have the one that worked too hard, a little sway back. And then we have the other one that didn't work quite hard enough, his little humpback. But these are just examples of some of the beautiful tribal work that's done in the rural parts of India. And as you can see, we have, again, an amazing selection of ornaments and unique stocking stuffers. When we were in Africa, we, were, we got some really cute, these are all handmade. 
I mean, look at that, a little handmade Santa Ana camel. And we also have some things, because in, in Africa, people do a lot of, biking is a really big thing there. We have the, we have a Santa Ana zebra, because when you're in Africa, you can't always count on reindeer. You may have to just settle for a zebra. And we also have bikers, a lot of, uh, let's see if we can find one, here's one. A lot of really cute ornaments that are made, this is a zebra riding a bicycle. So anybody else that, in the valley that does the PMC, keep an eye out for those zebras on the, uh, the extreme bikes because they could be taking the lead. And another country that we went to this year for the first time was Greece. And these are some of the items we got there. These are made from olive oil, really beautiful gift boxes. Olive oil hand cream and face soap. Um, these are made from seaweed and argon oil. And then, of course, if you want just something a little fun, olive oil soap with a magnet on it. And when we get to the Greek section, I'll tell you a little bit more about our projects in Greece because it was the reason that we went. So in Greece, we have a project called Amritel Mothers and Babies. When the refugee crisis first started a few years ago, and thousands of Syrians were fleeing their villages that were getting bombed. Amritel went to the border area on the, on the coast, and we recognized that one of the most distressing situations were the women that were showing up with brand new babies, or they were about to give birth, and even in a few instances were in the process of labor while they were trying to flee across the ocean, and they were trying to clamor off these boats, these zodiacs, while they were in labor. It became very apparent to us that we had to do something. So initially, we worked with the women in the camps as they were passing through to Europe. When the Greek government shut the borders and the people were staying in Greece, we set up a permanent project in downtown Athens. And I wanted to go visit that project this year to, to make sure that they were meeting our standards and to see if there was anything we could do to support them. And I have to tell you, I have never been so impressed with a young project. They've been there for maybe a year and a half, one of the most well-run projects I've seen in many years. And right now we're working with about six to seven hundred women and families every month. These are women with newborn babies. We do prenatal care, postnatal care, nutrition. We do well baby clinics. And so some of the things that you're seeing here are things that we bought while we shopped in Greece to raise money for this project. The beautiful colorful art is actually by a Danish artist, but she's selling her work in Greece. And one day we spent our day in an artist's avenue, I guess you could call it. The whole road going up to the Acropolis was set aside for artists, and the artists themselves were there selling their things. So we bought as much as we could locally from the artists. And we have these really colorful prints. Uh, we have some beautiful handmade bowls. These are very common in, in Turkey and in Greece and that whole Mediterranean. They're beautifully handmade and hand-painted. And they're just a very nice size. So if I got as many as I could. And we have olive wood. We didn't get much because it was a little heavy, but we have some beautiful olive wood salad forks and spoons. We have little salt scoops. And these are all from olive wood, which is just a beautiful wood. And uh, the olives weren't too bad either. And so you'll see there's some beautiful cloth, there's some beautiful ceramics, things that we bought in Greece. And again, knowing that the money here will go back to support the Amritel Mothers and Babies in Athens. So I mentioned the carpets. This year, our selection, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. So we have some wonderful selection of runners. We have runners from quite a few different countries. And as, as small as 2 feet by 8 feet, and then we go all the way up to 12 and 15 feet. And we have different styles, a very nice selection of different styles. We have Tibetan carpets, we have Afghani carpets, we have Jaipur carpets, Kashmiri carpets, carpets from different parts of India and different parts of uh, that whole part of Asia. And you can see that the selection is, is really rich this year. As always, we have a great selection of clothing. People had loved the, the ponchos we got last year, and I had a lot of requests, so we had some made. These are so cuddly and snuggly, and we have them in a number of different styles, some with a, just a nice drop neck, some that have an open part. And of course, as always, we got a lot of new shirts this year. Interestingly, when we were in Greece, we saw a number of women on the ferry wearing these kinds of embroidered shirts, and we thought, we've got to get those. 
I asked them where they came from. They said, oh, some village in Romania. I'm like, mm, that's going to make it difficult. But when we got to India, everywhere we went, we saw these embroidered shirts. So we have quite a nice selection of shirts. And we have things for men and women and children. And you know, as we had last year, we again got some nice fleece jackets, which when you wear them, people are sure to ask you where you got them because they're really unique. And we have some nice snuggly sweatshirts. We have just a lot of different things that we haven't had before, all different colors, different sizes, and for, as I said, men, women, and children. One of the things people look forward to at the boutique is our selection of jewelry. And everything that's on this table is brand new for this year. We have some wonderful jewelry that we were able to get in Africa. Really unusual, and uh, it's all made by the local artisans. And we got some beautiful stones when, uh, from a Nepali dealer, Tibetan stones. And you can see the Tibetan mirror, that's also new. We got that when we were in India. And we have some just lovely, lovely jewelry from Greece that, again, we bought from the artist's market when we went up the avenue. So I'm quite excited to be able to have an ex exceptional display of jewelry, I think, this year. And of course, you can see in the back one of my favorite new rugs. This is a tribal rug from Kashmir. So you'll see that we have a really nice selection of many new items that I think people are going to enjoy. And as always, maybe it's because one of our mandates is to really do what we can to help the lives of children. We have a lot of wonderful, fun things for kids. Last year, we did not have finger puppets from Peru, and I thought we were going to have a riot on our hand. This year, we have over 400 of these really incredibly cute things. These finger puppets are made by women in a cooperative that we started in an area of Lima called Paraiso de Alto. It's a very, very poor hillside community, and the moms come and they work together to crochet these little guys, and we, we provide them with a, a place to sell them. We also provide them the opportunity to learn how to make them, and we give them the things that they need, this, the yarn. And the money that the women make then, they can use to provide food for their children and for the kids to go to school. Because in Peru, they need to at least have shoes and book bags and clothing, like most places. And for many families, that's not a possibility. So this program has made a huge difference for many families. We also have a program for the children, the poorest children, where we provide them with a hot meal every day. And for many of these kids, that's their only meal. So it's, it's a huge help for the families there and for the children. And we have, again, this year we were able to get again these little animals that are organic wool, stuffed with wool, and they're made by women in the camps outside of Nepal, outside of Kathmandu, the Tibetan refugees. And this is providing an income for many of the women that are single moms. So this year we have some wonderful things. We're looking forward to seeing all of you. The sale begins this Saturday, December 2nd at 10 o'clock and it runs through Saturday, December 9th and it ends at 4 p.m. And it's gonna be open all week. Saturday it's open from 10 till 8 and all other days it's 10 to 6. Everybody that's working this is a volunteer. All the proceeds are going to support projects that Amartel's running around the world for women and children and for Puerto Rico. So if you would like to come down, we would love to see you. If you want to help, feel free to go to info at amartel.org and let me know. And I'm looking forward to meeting you all again. Best wishes for a happy holiday and best wishes for a happy new year.